Yo, Bingers, welcome back. Thanks for clicking. November is War Comics Month, and we are honoring that by checking out another great back issue war comic here from 1975, DC Weird War Tales, number 36, covered by Joe Kubert. You think he had a thing for cavemen? Oh, man. And now, this doesn't have quite the introduction like the first one did. We're going to get to uh, the first... I'm going to do three different stories. You pick which one is the best, which one is the worst. And the first one is, is kind of, you'll, you'll see the cover here. Here, let's get into it. 12,000 years ago, the sun beats down unmercifully as seven weary men trudge slowly across the desert sands of Africa. They have been without water for more days than they want to remember and now the sun is almost directly overhead. They look for shelter, but all they see is an endless ocean of sand. All they think about is dying until they find the pool. Story by Len Wein and Marv Wolfman. Art by Russ Heth. 1943 A.D. Seven haggard GIs have wandered the blistering Sahara sands aimlessly for several days in search of water until the thirst of many days is soon forgotten as they languish in the water, the refreshing water, the cool water, for the pool belongs to them as it has belonged to others a long time ago. Others who drank and swam and played and laughed. And they wondered how they died. Oh, and it's raining again, but don't worry about that. Because it doesn't rain in the army. It rains on the army. Above them, hungry eyes peer from a weathered face. Parched lips that have tasted only the dry desert sands yearn for the salvation seen below. The pool must be theirs. And when you want something, there's only one way to get it. Take it. Fight for it. Make it your own. Desperate men throw caution to the wind. Drowning men clutch at straws. But dying men will fight for life. And soon they fight for the pool. Check out that panel right there. But every prize has its price. The sounds of the war echo in the pool, stone on stone, flesh on flesh. And then there is silence. The sounds of war echo in the pool, steel on steel, flesh on flesh. And then there is silence. The pool waits in silence, anticipating other men will one day come. They always do. Dun, 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 dun. So that's kind of like a twist on the cover there. Bait and switch. I don't know, you tell me. Oh, but that's the one thing I want to show. If you check out the artwork around the panels, you notice here, like this, uh, uh, this is the first one, yes. And it's here around the panels. This shows the cavemen, right? But all this art around here is modern warfare. But if you notice, it's all land-oriented tanks and jeeps and stuff like that. And then on this side, it's got the 1943 soldiers. And you look in the background of the panels here, it's dinosaurs, prehistoric stuff. But they're all land-oriented, right? And you get to this page, look, it's battleships. Submarines. And then on this page, it's like prehistoric sea serpents and sharks and stuff. And then when you get to this part, again, the cavemen, airplanes, dogfights. <laughs> and then on this page with the, mo well, not modern GIs, but the 43 GIs. Again, flying, flying dinosaurs. So land, sea, and air. Beauty, eh? And check out this ad real quick for the claw. I got issue one there. 
Coming your way February 20th. So that's cool just to have this issue that that's advertising here. All right, so that's story number one. Oh, and speaking of ads, check out oh, another one coming soon. Tour. We did issue two here. I can't find issue one. But dun dun dun, tour. And again, bringing that back, Joe Kubert and his cavemen. All right, story two. To the dark legends of Transylvania have been added this turnabout tale that took place on bloody Halloween. And I know it's November, Halloween's over, we're closer to Thanksgiving. But if they could put Christmas decorations out in August, we can do a Halloween horror story on uh, in November. Now, I got, does this put, take place in Transylvania, I guess? It is my duty to warn you, Colonel, that you and your staff must not turn this castle into your headquarters. How come, Mr. Mayor? Script by George Cashjan and art by E.R. Cruz. It is haunted. Haunted by the spirit of a sorcerer more evil than Dracula himself. Hey, that sounds like a gas. Please, this is no joking matter. Have no fear, Mr. Mayor. If we spot any spooks, we'll sign them fast for special services. Fellow staffers, are you aware that tonight is October 31st? Halloween? Yeah, Captain Lacey. So what? So what better time to play a little prank on our skeptical CO? What do you have in mind? The answer came a few hours later as, with this mask and cape, Lieutenant Carp, you could f even fool Dracula. What's your plan, Captain Lacey? Don't ask me where they got a mask. Or a cape for that matter, but the old man always works into the wee hours. At midnight, you go into your act while the rest of us watch from the sidelines. <laughs> Lucky for us, the colonel has a sense of humor. Now as midnight casts a blanket of moonlight over the brooding castle. When the clock chimes, that'll be Carp's single signal. Boom! Boom! <laughs> Who's there? Oh boy, where'd you clowns dig up that corny costume? Who's underneath it? Lacey? Or Carp, I'll bet. Whoa, whoever you are, don't play so rough. A joke's a joke, but... Ah! The Colonel's right, Carp, got carried away. Time to call it to a hop. <coughs> huh? Am I crazy? Or did I see Carp change into a bat? I'd like to think you flipped, but I saw it too. Lacey, come here. Look at the Colonel's throat. See? Puncture marks. All his blood has been drained. He, he's dead. All right, who's the guy that knocked me out and why? Carp, you, you mean someone knocked you cold? Yeah, just before midnight when I was about to go into my act. Dun 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 dun, the end. There's our letters page. Let you see the artwork there again, all page. All right, there's story two, and then here's story three. The day after doomsday. The bombs fell on Wednesday. By Friday, the world was still. The growing rain ceased later. What would have been that afternoon if there had still been time or clocks to keep it? Neither clouds nor birds filled the crimson sky, and the sun set alone. All was silent, and so it remained until sometime the following Tuesday, when a small pile of crushed brick and gravel in a lot on West 47th Street shuddered and moved, and a hand rose from the wreckage. The figure rose up on uncertain feet and dusted itself off. The last man on earth turned and surveyed his kingdom. God, look at it. Nothing but rubble as far as the eye can see. We really did it up proud this time, didn't we? Here I stand, the last man on earth. Ruler of a kingdom of vanished fools. The last man on earth walked the shadow strewn streets with only the echo of his footsteps and the sound of his breathing to keep his company. Lord, what a joke. Ten thousand years of striving for the sun and man ends it like this. I wonder if... Dear heaven, there's someone else alive!
The last man on earth died behind the ruins and... It, it's a girl. No, stop. You don't know what you're doing. Who are you and what do you want with me? I'm the last man on earth, just as you are the last woman. Well, this guy's making a lot of assumptions. I mean you no harm. I'd just like to speak with you. Don't come any closer or I'll shoot. I mean it. If you pull that trigger, everything man has ever tried for, everything he's ever dreamed, will drown in the pool of my blood. You know I won't hurt you. Why don't you just hand the gun here? You, you're right. I guess I couldn't kill you, good girl. The world is ours now. It's up to us to correct the mistakes of the rest. To begin the new dawn of man. By the way, my name's Adam. Really? My name's Gertrude. The last man and woman on earth turned hand in hand and walked off towards the growing colors of the sunset. Script by Len Wein. Art by Jack Sparling. Dun, 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 dun. So there you go, a two-pager. And that was the twist, was that her name was Gertrude instead of Eve. This whole thing. But a beauty art, right? Alright, so comment down below. Which one was the best story? For me, I think it's got, it's got to be this one. Beauty art. I love the backgrounds in there. And I don't know, it's a toss-up for which one was the worst one. Bloody Halloween, you could see that coming a million miles away. Or a day after doomsday. Alright everybody, have a good one. And until next time, I'll see you in the back issues. Oh, and happy Thanksgiving. And God bless the troops.